behind the screen. There's a world Honestly, of so pure imagination. When I say, hey, watch these two things. Behind the screen. And then Jim goes, hey, and I'd also like to talk about this third thing. Me. You said to yourself, oh, sweet, so I don't need to watch that third thing. And and I'll point is that, you is in that the how right it went? Direction. <laughs> is it? Honestly, is that is that how it went? That's what I'm at. Because I just want to understand. Because, like, I didn't watch the third thing because I had no interest in it. But I did watch the other two things. It's not like when I said, hey, let's watch these two things. And then Jim said, and a third thing. I didn't go, you know what? I'm not going to watch anything, actually. Never mind. <laughs> Since Jim wants to watch a third thing, I don't think I'm going to watch anything. <laughs> I'm just trying to understand how this worked. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Paul Goble Show. I'm your host, Paul Goble. Joining me, as always, is my co-host and best friend, Jim Bruce. Hi, everybody. And his co-friend and best host, Tom Griffin, is also uh, here. Hello. Hi, Tom. And then this other idiot, Brian McNett, is on the show. <laughs> Remember him? Oh, what? Yeah, that's Hi, not Brian. The, that's not the intro Welcome. we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I did not get the memo. Jim texted it to me. <laughs> Oh, did he did he text it to your old landline in Tucson? <laughs> yeah, he sent it to my hotmail address. <laughs> it was uh, trousershock at geocities.com. <laughs> before the show, uh, before the show, I sent a uh, email to Brian with a email that's twenty years old. Of course, Brian does not still have that email. I also sent one to Tom to an email that's like thirty years old. Of course, he still has that email. <laughs> 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 how many emails have you had in your whole life tom oh oh um probably less than 10 that's impressive considering you're you're in your 40s i don't want to call yeah. you out but mm -hmm. considering you're a full-grown man that is impressive that you had less than 10 let's just leave it at that he's in his 40s <laughs> <laughs> well because Considering, like, I mean, certain people of a certain age, like Jim and myself, all had an AOL address at some point. But you just, you came in on the end of that, right? Like, for you, AOL was already over when you were starting to use email? Is AOL right? was still around. Um, I, I guess, I, I technically, I probably had an AOL address for, like, three months when I was using free AOL internet. Right, because it was summer. free, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I never used that address. Yeah, for us, that was pretty much the only option at the time. That's so weird now, and there's, like, free ones. Remember when you had, there were uh, there was a free email service, but you had to watch ads in order to read your email? Remember those? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. I used to have uh, Net Zero. Yeah. Paul, yeah, that's what it was. Paul, remember, yeah. when you, remember when you had that dog named free email service? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? And now, up, and I remember I was I was using my email and it went out and I was like, "Hey, free email service! What the fuck?" And I noticed my door was open and my dog had got out also. Yeah, and everybody so it was, was like, a weird coincidence, is what I'm saying. My email went out right same time my dog went out. They were both named the same thing. It's just it doesn't happen often, but and it's you just were a weird thing. Needed. Oh, fucking! All right. What happened? Mary Jo set this up and it's set up at a time limit. So we're going to start over. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Wait, I think this is great. Let, we got less than 10 minutes to do this. <laughs> well, what we'll do is do I, we can, want it? I can put that Let's shit. Let's not start that. over. Yeah, I, I know. At the, well, at the end of this, when it's done recording, won't it ask us, like, do we want to do another one or something? It might, or I can just invite you again and send it to another email address. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably most All effective, right. actually. Oh, All right. Why is it only 10? Why is it set up for, is this a professional account or a, 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 a novice account, amateur account? So Mary Jo was like, I will set you up with the professional account, and that's clearly not what happened. Oh. So this is professional account is supposed to have no time limit correct yeah but that part's not a big deal we'll just record that but this is fun right people watching this oh sure or, or right. listening let's continue okay uh well um uh you can do anything 
cool this week? <laughs> Anything interesting <laughs> happen? Uh, I, I have a feeling the answer is no, but you guys, you tell me. Well, because of the quarantine, of course, I've been very uh, frustrated, I think, like all of us. And so I, I think I sp like Bean and I, the one thing that we thought we could do is he and I went to a nice crowded Outback restaurant, which is pretty great. And uh, sure. sh shared some nachos. Isn't that right, Brian? Went to. Yeah. Yeah. Why did you those... go to Outback for nachos? Uh, <laughs> Why did you go to a Mexican place? I'm glad you asked that question, Paul. I was wondering the same thing. Because I mean, they have good nachos there, but there's other things that they're known for that are, are you better. Are you well, making because... rules? Are you making rules, Paul? <laughs> no, I would never. I would never try to make rules about the outfit. All right. Well, and so the, we had a blooming nachos. The, sure. the reason the reason we were having nachos at Outback is because we already kind of full from the steak we had at Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it was backwards. <laughs> what? So, mm -hmm. so it was. You had your. You had your steak first, and then you had your appetizer. Yeah. Hey, if you don't boil my steak in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention that ice cream sundae you had at fucking hot dog on a stick <laughs> earlier, right? Yep. <laughs> and it's hard to eat ice cream with a stick. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. Well, they deep fry it. Unfortunately, all that comes out is a burnt stick. A stick, right. <laughs> I just... Uh... <laughs> I just cut out the middleman and burn my own stick at home. It's easier. <laughs> now, where did you find the recipe for that? Um, <laughs> up your butt. <laughs> now, who's, who's no, working? No. I, I, I'm not working, but I wasn't working before the yeah. quarantine. Jim, you're still working at, at your job, right? Yep. You're oh, my God. You're on the front lines. What about you two dummies? Yeah, I, I was, my department was already primarily working from home anyway, so we okay, just transitioned good. to being just full-time at home. That's and the, the funny thing was, is so they, when they were kind of in the middle of figuring this out about us going home full-time or whatever, is my team, we didn't have official desks at the office because we worked at home so much, we didn't have like our own desk, we just kind of had shared desks. Uh, and then they were looking for volunteers to come in and collect all the stuff off these random desks everybody's been using. And I was like, uh, keep it. I don't, yeah, just, yeah, you can burn it or whatever. I, whatever you find in the drawers, it's yours. Yeah. yeah it's, that doesn't sound fun. Just fucking yeah. leave it. Well, the great thing is when this is all over and they're like, come on back. And then you can say, hey, man, unless I have that scrunchy dead plant and that mug that says, <laughs> I'm not drunk. I'm just tired. I can't work there anymore. <laughs> right? You got to work from home. What if about you, Tom? Are you working five o'clock somewhere? Are you working from home? I am. Or mm -hmm. or hardly working from home? Ha ha ha! That was almost a thing. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, I'm working from home. Yeah. Okay, good. So don't feel bad about us. My wife is also working from home, so we all have jobs. But feel bad about that. Jim might get sick. You can feel uh, bad for Jim. Yeah. Man, it's, I'm fucking tired, too, man. It is, I don't know if you guys know this, but when you're working out in the public during a pandemic, it's, it's kind of draining. It'll take a lot out <laughs> of the guy. Yeah? It's yeah. kind of hard, hard on you? Yeah. It kind of sucks. I don't remember the last time this happened uh, because it was the fucking Spanish flu when that happened. Fuck. You know what you do? You get some of that Spanish flu and you put it in a girl's drink. Gets her all hot and bothered, man. <laughs> it's fucking sweet. Um, all right. Well, uh, you guys want to talk about some TV shows? <laughs> sure. Before the timer runs yeah. out, let's see how far we get. we got four minutes. <laughs> all right. Well, let's talk about one that clearly only two of us watched, if we're lucky. Uh, the Middle Ditch and Schwartz Improv Special on Netflix. I watched all, I think, I think there's three episodes. I watched all of them. Who watched any of them? I watched the first one. The wedding episode. Yes, the short, short parking Paul. lot wedding. Yeah, that was, <laughs> With Squirt Paul. Honestly, that was my favorite of the three. So Jim and Brian, you didn't watch it at all. Although I did not watch it, I could improvise an opinion about it. 
<laughs> well, yeah, I, what else would be different? I mean, that well, is what you usually do. Right, is that a joke about the title? That's pretty good, right? <laughs> well, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's Thomas Middleditch from Silicon Valley and Ben Schwartz from Parks and Rec, he plays John Ralphio, doing two-man long-form improv, uh, which isn't all that unusual or, uh, or groundbreaking and all, except that it's very, very funny. It's really good. And it, I don't know, Tom, please speak to this. Give me your opinion. But it reminds me of when I was a young man and I was really impressed by improv. And I thought it was the funniest and just most clever thing. I, and then eventually I learned exactly what improv was all about and got, oh, it's, there's a lot of tricks involved. It's not as clever as I thought it was. But this is what it, good improv should be. You know what I mean? It's long mm. form. Uh, they don't rely on any tricks at all. They do what good improvisers do and they go for about an hour. And then when it seems like a good stopping point, they say, all right, that was a good ending. Good night. And there's a lot of laughs. Like you cannot deny it. It's fucking funny as hell. Tom, your thoughts? Yeah. Well, they're two naturally funny guys and that always helps. Um, they've got a good rapport. Um, and the, the other thing that, the thing that I found charming about it was that they don't take it too seriously. Right. Um, like there, there were moments where they broke. There were moments where like, they acknowledged that like one of them forgot a detail or something or they're like, they kept forgetting the names of the characters they had just created. Right. And that kind of became a runner in the thing is that they couldn't remember who anybody's name was. Yeah. And they um, give over, they give into that. They lean into that. Like there's yeah, one weren't. episode, I think it's a, uh, uh, is it the same episode where Thomas Middleton was trying to make the fart noise with his hands? Uh, no. there's, <laughs> there's one of the episodes where he's trying to do that and he, and he's not quite doing it. And Ben Schwartz goes, Seriously, can you not do that? <laughs> right. Yeah, and they just yeah things like that. They, they acknowledge the absurdity of what's happening. Um, they're not precious about it, so it doesn't it, it doesn't come across as stilted or, or pretentious or anything. They're just they're very they're in the moment in the best way. Yeah, and not afraid to make just dumb one off jokes that you know maybe don't even add to the scene. Jim, you'll appreciate this. Uh, the whole one of the premises premises of the of the improv is that it's a bunch of people who met at different music festivals and they were all invited to this wedding so at one point in the improv they realize that one of them is playing the bride's dad and the other one is playing the groom's mom but they're both on the same side of the church <laughs> so they're talking and middle juice is like wait are both families on the same side of the church <laughs> and ben's like yeah and they go well who's on the other side and they both pick up their chairs and run to the other side and they go this side's for musicians baby <laughs> and they just start jamming <laughs> they're going boom 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 and then they start going rock and roll rock and roll <laughs> and it's fucking great and I honestly, except for maybe one slight reference that never comes back the whole rest of the improv, which to me, it was kind of a heartbreaking. I wanted to see more of those guys. But that's what I thought. It was like good old fashioned, funny improv from the good old days. You could actually put it, and it's in front of a giant uh, audience too. So that helps. You can't ever do improv, not in front of an audience, I think. But it reminds me, I'm sure, I don't know about you guys, but we, Just to recap for everybody, and then we'll get back to where Paul was. Uh, it kicked us out because I'm dumb. And then uh, Paul told me to email him at Alta Vista, and I did because I don't know better. <laughs> and so, uh, so great. All right. But we're recording now, yeah? Yep. So, okay. So, as I what I was, the point I was making was. <laughs> It reminded me of when we were in high school, Jim, and we used to watch like War Babies and Whose Line Is It Anyway and shit like that back when that stuff was fresh and funny. And I don't know, is it fun? Was it funnier than because we didn't know better or was it less funny later because we are just assholes? And why is this particular one so much funnier now? And I'm still just as much an asshole as I have been. Uh, Any, anyone? I actually have a theory. Here's my theory. Uh, when I was a kid, I loved Muhammad Ali, right? And sure, then he's the greatest. Absolutely. And then when he, at some point, my fondness for him lost its luster. And I thought, oh, maybe I'm not a fan of his anymore. 
And then I was reminded later, so, something happened to remind me that he's great. And the same thing happened in a, the last dance, which we'll talk about later, where I went, oh yeah, the thing I used to like is great. I think you and I just tend to be jaded pricks and we forget that the thing we liked had a value. And this show just reminded you, oh, maybe I shouldn't be such a jaded old asshole and I should shave this stupid beard, you know? Wait, wait a minute. What was that second part? You know, just don't be so jaded. A lot of the stuff you liked was really cool and get better glasses, you fucking fat fuck. You know? I'm sorry, you cut out. You said a lot of that stuff was really... Yeah, like we had a lot of joy growing up and Brooke made a mistake and it's just... we. <laughs> what? Who married a what? Yeah, yeah. You know, back in high school, we had so much fun back then, and you should probably get a cancer screening. And I don't know. It's just, it was a good, you know, you get All it. All right. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, all right. Well, I'd love to ask Brian something, but. We'll do it. Hey, Brian. Oh, uh, yeah. What do you need to know about improv? Do you like it? Uh, I used to like watching Jim do improv, but he always did like the same joke every time where he would just shit his pants on the stage. <laughs> well, that was his, his running character. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In, in my defense, they were wildly different shits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I, yeah. I mean, that's true. You would be like, hey, hey, before tonight's show, I had a bunch of corn. I'm like, oh, okay. So when you auditioned for SNL, did you explain to them, this is like a running character and I'll take different types of shits every time? <laughs> uh, how, how, were they receptive to that? Yeah, the most absurd part of that is somebody letting me in a building. <laughs> well, I bet you somebody did audition for SNL by shitting their pants at least once. Um, all right, let's talk about uh, this Parks and Rec special. Uh, who watched that besides me? I know you did, Tom. I watched and it. Yep. Jim? Uh, I Jim did. did. Brian? Yep. No, no, I was busy. Yeah? Doing what? <laughs> Taking all the furniture well, out of that room. Did you build a Los <laughs> Palmas in your house? <laughs> so you could keep going to the bar every night and then pretend you're walking home? Yeah, yeah, that's what I do. I just go knock on the door every time. Like, maybe they'll that, be open. Do you pay that hot bartender to come to your house and serve you drinks and pretend <laughs> she likes you? <laughs> they, they like me for reals. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's not that you're there every night spending half your paycheck. <laughs> um, so here's the thing. I mean, when I heard there was a part, you know, I'm, I'm friends with Jim O'Hare. We all remember when Jim was on the show. Uh, and it was it was fun. And I saw on his Facebook, he's like, I can talk about it now. It's going to be a thing. And I was like, wow, what a great idea. First of all, it just seems like a natural. If you were going to think of any show to do a reunion of this, Parks and Rec makes like the most sense, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe The Office, but they all work in the same place. So, uh, but it's funny because over the summer, I started wa uh, re-watching shows, and I re-watched all of The Office, and I re-watched all of Parks and Rec and Community as well. And Parks and Rec probably holds up the best of, of almost any sitcom, not just because uh, there's nothing in it that seems weird or gross, you know what I mean? There's no point, like a lot of old shows, you know, not sometimes through no fault of their own, you watch it and you go, uh, that was a joke that is not as great as it used to be. But that there's nothing like that in Parks and Rec. There, that never happens. Plus, they were the first show, to the first sitcom, I guess, to do like a fast forward, to skip from actually modern times to do like some weird thing where now we're in the future and we can kind of do what we want. And that carried over to this special as well. But I think just that kind of, the way they produced the show in the first place uh, helped to make this happen. If it wasn't for the world they set up in the original show, they would have never been able to do something like this because this is the first, this Parks and Rec version is the first thing I've seen where it basically is taking place in the real world. Like I've seen people 
do Zoom calls that were, you know, on a spaceship or whatever. They're doing shows that are specifically meant for Zoom calls, but nobody's saying it's because we're in a pandemic, but that's what they did on this episode. They said, hey, just like you, we're in a pandemic and I'm in Washington and I'm in Pawnee and blah, blah, blah. And I thought that was really cool and it helped them to raise money and raise awareness and all of that, which is probably the main point. That's what I liked about it. It wasn't as funny as I would have liked it to be though, which I guess is, is my, my button on that, my, my opinion. Well, who else has an opinion on that? Uh, so I'll share and then we'll end with Tom because he loved the show so much and he's probably got more to say than I would. But the one thing that stuck out to me was, I like of course the idea that we're doing a Zoom call in the real world, but then I found it a little jarring in some ways because uh, people who live in the same house, you had to have an excuse for why we're in different rooms. Yeah, with, that occurred to me immediately. And, yeah. and luckily they immediately addressed it, but it does seem a little, it, I it, don't know. Yeah, it took me out of it for as much as I was supposed to be in it. And also, yeah. man, uh, you know, that one, his name's Andy, right? Andy's the, the goofy guy, right? Andy, yeah. Uh, yes. man, uh, man, he got in a lot better shape than I remember him being on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Just always, yeah. he comes back, you're like, well, what happened during the pandemic? Well, I'm eating nothing but lean chicken and I'm uh, exercising <laughs> on and I'm in the best but shape. But that's kind of, but, but that is kind of what he's done in real life. He was, he was this he fat and lazy. And then when he got Guardians of the Galaxy and all those other shits, he, er, it was actually that war movie he did first, right? Where he was an army guy going behind enemy lines to pick up, to rescue oh, someone. Yeah, yeah. army movie. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it was called. But he had his shirt off a lot in it, and he made a point saying, yeah, I Ooh. really worked hard to get cut. Gotta um, check that. Check that out. <laughs> there's actually, there was a joke about it on Parks at one point about him. Yeah, when he went to week. England, right? Yeah. Because he was off the show because they said he went to England to work with Sarah Fanowitz, but in a couple episodes they went back after he had shot whatever he was shooting, and he was all in great shape, and he made a he made a joke of it, right? The, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, but I guess now it makes more sense just to, since he's not on that show anymore, and of course he's older, so it's a lot harder to stay in shape, just be skinny and in good shape on a regular basis. And then the last I, I thought I had, last thought I had before I, we turn it over to Tom was just, like any show that you come back to, the rhythm is just different, and that's not anybody's fault. It just, I learned that when I was a kid, and you'd see a reunion, and you'd be really excited, and then the people would come back, and even if they looked the same, they weren't quite the character just because it's acting. So it always would stick out to me. We're like, that guy's not quite the character I remember, but I'm old enough to, yeah. and also yeah. nice it, that they did it. But in some, I, I know what you're talking about. Cause in some cases it was like, Oh, he had a heart attack. Uh, in between that and now. And he clearly is not as healthy as he used to be, or it's, Oh, he doesn't really want to be doing this. Right. So he's barely trying. Yeah. Uh, and he's not even doing the character. He's just reading the lines. Yeah, I know exactly what that's like. But in this case, everybody was trying. But I thought, but I think you make a good point because the people who did pull it off, like Adam Scott and Jim, I think particularly, like Adam Scott especially, he didn't, he didn't miss a fucking beat. He was exactly the way he used to be on the show. And I thought, I think you're right. It stands out when he does that. And, you know, I, I kind of got the feeling Aubrey Plaza was fucking around a little more than she should have been. But yeah. what'd you think, Tom? I think fucking around is right in her character's wheelhouse. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Point uh, taken. And I think, I think some, of the, some of the awkwardness is probably due to the format. Um, there's only so much you can do in that format to, like, build the rhythm. Um, True. Yeah, so like in when you're filming, you can cover a lot of stuff with editing. You can tighten stuff and and um, stuff that wasn't quite perfect on the day. You can you can fiddle with it. Uh, they probably also got less room to with, with that format. True, Jim. I was just saying they probably all. Well, also <laughs> you're <have> frozen. <laughs> oh. uh, me? What, what were you trying to say? I was just saying they probably have. Yes. A <laughs> I was saying they probably have a Zoom time limit. A Zoom time limit? Yeah. Wow, they kept getting man. kicked out of their Zoom account? Yeah. 
That was uh, worth it. That was worth getting through it. Um, <laughs> and without a doubt. Um, I liked, uh, well, I mean, tell me what you think, Tom, but to me, it was clear that Joan Ralphio was the funniest part of the whole thing. Yeah, and I would agree. I, I mean, granted, had there been more of it, it probably wouldn't have been as funny. It was perfect, you know, a short burst like that and all by himself. Um, and I would have liked to see Mona Lisa and some other weird characters because also Purd was great. Uh, it, it was good to see Purd, which was funny as shit, but he didn't do a thing on his own. But I thought that I definitely wanted to see John Ralphio again. But did you feel weird that seeing Aziz Ansari again after all this time, after him being away <laughs> for so long? Uh, I did, that didn't, didn't occur to me. I, I didn't think about that. No. Not at all. But what I about guess you? I just, well, because it's Parks, it would be weird for him not to be. I there. agree. I agree. But my, I mean, my first thought was, wow, it's been a while since we've seen him do anything. Why is that? Oh, right. That's why I remember. It's just a weird thing. What did that occur to you at all, Jim? Um, I, en I enjoyed Aziz's, uh, standup special that he made after that Hulker fluffle. So I've seen him work yeah. fairly recently in that sense. So I, and I looked at him as a guy who doesn't deserve to be canceled. So I don't think of him that way. So I enjoyed him. And because right. I liked that stand-up special so much, it didn't, it didn't occur to me at all. Cause I just Wasn't enjoyed it. Yeah. So Brian, the reason you didn't watch it is because you were protesting. Because the wizard <laughs> What is I mean, wrong with you? That's a spot on Jim impression he's doing. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. What? Are you frozen or are you just f being frozen? <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, it's uh, I love how. It's I love the fact. I don't know what's going on. Oh, Jesus. There we go. Well, you're back, but it's really, I don't know, slow. I don't know what's or going on. It's oh, there you are. There. I was, I was going to ask you, is the reason you didn't watch it is because you're still mad at him for that whole thing? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's why. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've, got, I've got Brian on the satellite. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's move on i don't know why it's like not i don't know why the is is it just me that all of a sudden it's just like not working or something nah, I've, it's happened to jim is it too. just you have you been watching jim yeah it's not just you all right let's move on well no i'm just saying like all of a sudden it was like everything everything was totally fine and then i didn't do anything and all of a yeah sudden, you you sat around no you sat so, around for like 40 cool. minutes when no one was taught when you had nothing to say and then the minute i ask you something it freezes that's somehow that's zoom new yeah <laughs> uh okay <laughs> let's do the trivia question for this episode all right that's uh, a thing See if any of you guys know the answer to this. Uh, Thomas Middleditch, you might remember you said, sometimes he still does, used to do those phone commercials. I don't remember what service it was for, but he used to do commercials for some phone plan. And Boost? for a while there was, what? Boost? Dynamite drop-in, Jim. Uh, and for a while, there was a young lady who was doing the commercials with him. Mm. Uh, her name was Joy, I believe. Um, uh, so my question is, that young lady, uh, I don't know if that's her real name, but that was her character in the commercial was Joy. That actress also appeared as a recurring character on an HBO, a recent HBO sitcom. What is that sitcom? Who wants to guess? Jim? Um, sex in the City. <laughs> I thought you were going to say dream on for sure. Oh, that would have been better. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping you would say dream on, but of course it's not that. Uh, Tom, you have a guess? Arliss. Oh, <laughs> good pull. Nice. Not the, not the answer. Brian? Do you have a guess? Uh, was Band of Brothers a comedy? <laughs> Probably for you. <laughs> Is that the one where Chris Pratt was shirtless? Yeah, that was it. 
<laughs> those were Chris Pratt was super hot and shirtless. All right, so none of those are correct. So, uh, listeners, if you know the answer, what uh, HBO recent HBO sitcom that uh, actress was on, you can write to me at paul at thekingoftv.com. I won't get it because that email doesn't uh, work anymore. But you can still write to me at paul at thekingoftv.com. But Whoa. if you actually want. If you actually want to answer, you can get to me through Facebook Messenger or any other number of ways. Yes, Jim? Um, I have a second guess, but should I save it because the viewer might want to actually get this? Well, I, have, I doubt you're, you have the right answer, so go ahead. Is it that uh, Hugh Laurie Avenue spaceship show? <laughs> no, that's an actual real guess, but no. Yeah, I That's love that correct. show. I love that show. It is a good show. Yeah. I do. I like it very much too. I can't wait for season two. But we're not talking about that now. All right. Uh, uh, so you guys all uh, watched the Bulls documentary, The Last Dance. I, I did not watch it. So who wants to tell me what? It obviously, was about the Bulls, but I'm a, I'm assuming it's more nuanced than that. Who wants to tell me what it was really about? Um, do you want me to start, or should you start, Tom? Uh, well, I, yeah, I, I, so it's about, it's ostensibly, it's about the Bulls, um, their last championship season, um, which was a, it was odd because they went into that season kind of knowing that that was the end of that run. It was a very strange situation where they were a, a historically good and a historically successful team. And they went into that season knowing the management intended to blow the team up. Um, at the end of that season. Okay, so that's how it happened. It wasn't just that people retired or people uh, contract negotiations broke down and people went other places. The management said we can afford to do a rebuilding year and save money next year. Is that kind of yeah, it? pretty much. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, if there was any franchise that can afford to do it, it's certainly the Bulls of that era. So I get that. It uh, it is a testament to the hubris of Kraus and Reinsdorf. <laughs> and there's a famous quote. There's a famous quote that was certainly famous in Chicago that I had forgotten about that makes me realize that when I used to hate Bulls management, I was fucking correct. Uh, Jerry Krause at the beginning of the season said to Phil Jackson, if you guys go undefeated, you're not coming back next year. Because he was such a, just a, a prick who didn't – oh, that season he also famously said of the Michael Jordan Bulls, uh, franchises win championships, not players. Smart thing to say in the paper when you have Michael Jordan. And the, the funny thing is, Paul, you say, oh, well, they could just blow it up and rebuild, but that's never been a good idea for any team in the middle of a good, good run because as Michael Jordan – wisely observed rebuilding's no guaranteed his joke was how long have the cubs been rebuilding and you look at what happened with the bulls afterwards they could have competed potentially won two more championships no guarantee but they could have easily competed especially knowing what we know now that the following season was fucking 50 games michael jordan right okay yeah let me ask you this then because uh, obviously hindsight is twenty twenty, but um, had they gone on another year, can you say can? You, and I'm honestly asking, do you feel uh, confident that had they gone on another year or another two years, that none of these guys would have held out for more money or just walked to another team or some done something else to fuck this up? Well, and not, and not let the fuck it up that would have would it have been fucked up some other way I guess well the here's the thing potentially and tom i want to see what tom thinks of this potentially pippen might have walked because he was his contract was finally up and he was a little disappointed in how little money he'd been getting but at the same time the bulls were in the position to give him the best potential contract and if he's staying to compete for another championship i think they would have paid him it was all dumb ego on Krause's part. Certainly not saying the players don't have egos. Okay. Tom? Okay. Fair enough, yeah, Tom. Yeah, I'm, I'm, so I had forgotten this detail, but Scottie Pippen at the time was, like, notoriously underpaid. He was one of the best players in the NBA and had 
like a mid-level NBA contract. Right. Like he was notoriously underpaid. I'd right. forgotten that detail. Uh, so uh, it, it's in there that he was actually – there was some – going into the season, there was some tension between him and management because he was trying to throw his weight around a little and try and – he had asked for a trade and said he wasn't going to play and then went back on that and eventually played because he realized that he wasn't going to get the trade. He had no leverage there. Uh-huh. Um, so, so there was there was some tension, but S- Michael and Scotty and at that time Rodman, they were tight. They complemented each other well. They – they uh, appreciated what each brought to – so the core of that team was solid. And they liked, they liked Phil as a coach. And the, dom- the first domino was Krause, for some reason, deciding he wasn't going to bring Phil back. And Michael straight up said, if, you don't, if Phil's not coming back, I'm not coming back. I will retire. Okay. I don't want to play for anybody else. Yeah. yeah. And then- All right. Well, I mean, that, that kind of makes it clear. Now, it's funny because unlike you guys, Tom and Brian, Jim and I were living in Chicago at the time. So we Woo! have you know, very, Chicago. very uh, strong right. memories of all that going on. And, you know, I'm sh- and uh, one thing that I heard people talking about a lot about this that they found amusing or shocking was all the local commercials that Scottie Pippen did in Chicago, Mr. Submarine and insurance and <laughs> places like that. We, of course, saw all those living in Chicago and thought it was, hey, why not? Why wouldn't he do commercials? It's not like we're in Lansing, Michigan. It's fucking Chicago. This, even though it's playing locally, it's still Chicago. So why not? And Mr. Submarine is not like just his brother's restaurant. It's a major chain in Chicago. But looking at that as a guy who didn't live that, I guess the way they portrayed it in the, in the documentary was, wow, look at all the shit he had to do to make money. A- am I getting that right? I don't remember them touching on that particular point yet, but the fact that he was not making a lot of money by NBA standards, even at the time, was definitely did come up. And that's, well, that I was mean, part of the narrative. Michael Jordan is doing Hanes and McDonald's and Nike commercials. Scottie Pippen is doing uh, Mr. Submarine and Mazda DeMio commercials with me. So, <laughs> okay, let's not forget, Scottie Pippen had to do a commercial with me. Right. Were you also him? Like- Weren't you guys also in Space Jam with Michael? <laughs> no, it was the knockoff. We were in Space Dance. <laughs> it was, oh, good. We got, uh, we got upgraded. Yeah, we were, uh, we were in, uh, you know how when you used to go to Blockbuster and you'd see the movie right next to all the good ones that were out and it looked similar? That's what it was. It was Scottie Pippen and me in Space Dance. <laughs> And I wore ears. I wore like rabbit ears and I ate a carrot through the whole thing, but there was no animation. Hey, no- what's going on dentist? Yeah. I was like, I, I would eat the carrot and go, excuse me. Hold on. <laughs> uh, what's going on dentist. And they'd be all like, there's no dentists here anyway. And then uh, we, had the, we had to fight the rock stars. <laughs> Okay, Brian, now's your chance to say something. And I know you like sports, so don't be a fucking idiot. What do you think of this? Uh, so to to be honest, I'm uh, I I don't I, it was probably because it was so hyped, but I didn't. It, I mean, it's enjoyable, but I don't. I, I don't know what I was expecting to. Are you saying you were happen, disappointed? Unless, yeah, because oh. I I mean. They basically, I mean, since I followed sports, yes. I more or less knew all of this anyway. So it wasn't anything like I was like, what? Rodman's crazy? <laughs> Hold on a minute. Or whatever. Hey, like, I don't Jim, know. remember when they used to call them Batman, Superman, and Rodman? I do. <laughs> I do. Remember that? Remember that. Which was dumb because, of course, Shaq is Superman. He's got the tattoo, and he played Superman in that movie. Yeah. Hey, he was the metal <laughs> Superman. Brian. But I always thought that was funny. Brian, let me ask yeah. you a question. So do you think, because I'm loving the crap out of this, do you think it's just one of those, maybe it's a nostalgia thing because you weren't like a big Bulls fan, so you're strictly looking at it as a sports guy, whereas to me, I so vividly remember living through it like the moment they reminded me that Tim Floyd exists, I was fucking <laughs> living. Right. Yeah. Trent Tucker, all those guys. <laughs> now, Tim Floyd, the dipshit college coach that they replaced Phil, 
Phil Jackson with. Right, right. <laughs> that they were like, this is the new Phil Jackson. No, no, it's not really the new. No. Well, he's remember he, new he Alan Jackson. But remember, he he's the one that implemented the circle offense. Remember? He's not even the new <laughs> Tito Jackson. <laughs> That's great. He's saying we're all gonna get in a circle, guys. This is gonna be our new offense. It's one big. No, this circle. is great. It's one pass, and we all jerk off. <laughs> yeah. Tom, now Tom, yeah. you obviously enjoyed it, and you didn't live in Chicago at the time. So, right. uh, what was it mainly? And you probably knew most of this, like Brian. So, what was it that made it most enjoyable for you? Uh, I I find it. I, I always find it interesting when they do interviews with players long enough past their career that they're willing to be candid and honest about because close to their career in their career and they're even close to the end of the career they're maybe trying to keep up a little bit of a front mm -hmm. and most athletes you get them you get them 10 years out and they're willing to just actually say what happened and how they felt and so yeah as i find that stuff interesting i will say to brian's point that there was a lot of hype going into this about um how they're going to show you never before seen footage from the last season and how they had cameras with them the whole time. And that's actually we're like four, I've seen four out of the 10 episodes and that's only been a small part of it. Actually a lot, there's a lot of retrospective in it. A lot of comparing the ascent of the bulls to the weirdness of that final season where they kind of knew it was already over. They're still trying to win one last championship. But they know it's already over. Right. Um, so there's a lot of it's, a, a lot of what they promised going into the show hasn't shown up yet. Oh, but, okay. But I find a lot of the later interviews interesting. And I always find it like the stuff I find sort of affecting the most when you're talking to athletes is when you see a guy like Michael Jordan, who is, I mean, he wasn't just the top of his sport. He was notoriously competitive and like didn't want to acknowledge other players at the time. And when you see a guy like him or like Bird or like Magic long enough past their playing career that they're able to speak earnestly about other players and show an appreciation for them. Like I always like Michael says, he said at one point, he said, no one should ever talk about Michael Jordan without also mentioning Scottie Pippen. Right. Yeah. And to see a guy like Michael go on record and say that, or to see a guy like, to see guys like Magic and Bird that were notorious, that were champions and notoriously competitive go yeah you couldn't stop michael he was amazing <laughs> like i always that's the stuff that i always i always find kind of affecting is when you see those guys that were at the top of their field and uh, and were an infamously competitive able to acknowledge other players and say yeah. yeah that guy was impressive and obviously at the time they're all playing they can't do that it's why would you do that why would you tell another player you're flat out better than me that that makes no sense so even though they knew it. And so this is, it's almost like a relief to be able to say, yeah, he was fucking amazing. I'm glad I can say it now. So oh. what? Where did you grow up? <laughs> what? Before Tucson. <laughs> Before Tucson. Flint, Michigan, you know this. And what basketball team did you tell me you liked before the Bulls? Oh, well, obviously I grew up watching the Pistons. for a Dude, episode bunch. four. Episode four, the bad boy Pistons, who I think you watched. Oh, I was going to ask, is Bill Lambeer in this documentary? Dude. I, oh, then I should fucking watch it. I then. just found you're in, dude. <laughs> That's hilarious. Paul, I will watch it then. Yeah. If Bill Lambeer is in it, I'm on board. Paul, now, when Paul moved to Chicago, he had to adjust to pretending to be a Bulls fan. But I'm telling you, this motherfucker, Paul, is not good. bad boy Pistons fan. Well, it was it was a it was all about the timing, because I moved there right after the whole bad boys thing was over with, and the whole bulls thing was fucking exploding. So, and of course, one of our closest friends is Graham Melwood. So I had to constantly get a bullshit, and the bulls are the greatest thing ever. So it was just easier for me to go, yes, you're right, the bulls are better. That was the bottom line. It was just easier for me to say, yes, yes, the yeah. Bulls are better. Because I, I justified it by saying, well, now they are better. They're certainly a better team now than the Pistons are now or that the Pistons were then. So argument's over with. Think whatever you want, Graham. We're on the same page. Yeah, and I, I will say, watching the special, I'm like, oh, yeah, I do hate Isaiah Thomas. Yep, I do. I hate that guy. <laughs> 
Uh, people loved him in Detroit. Uh, that's that's uh, you won't get a, a, away with saying that. It, did I hear that you have to pay to see this? Did you guys pay for it? Is that true? No. no. Oh okay. no. It's, no, but it's, it's on, on ESPN. ESPN. It's on ESPN though. So, and okay. Hulu, right? It's ESPN. It's an ESPN Hulu production, so I did not have to pay for it. Oh yeah, I have Hulu. So all right, I'll check out that episode on Hulu, that Bill and Beer episode for sure. Uh, all right, anything else before we uh, wrap this up? Uh, do you guys want to do any plugs? Any other shit you're doing, Brian? Uh, you got something going on, don't you? Oh yeah, you want to come see me? Listen to some calls for a medical distributor. <laughs> Wait, is that an actual option? Can I actually do that? No, actually, I probably would break HIPAA if you were watching me or listening to me do stuff where there's patient information flying yeah, around. That's what I'm saying. That like, seems like a, a breach of privacy. I was going to get in on that, but okay. Uh, what about you guys? Now, me and Brian are, are in Arizona, but you, Tom and Jim, you're in California. I heard well, there was an earthquake recently. I, there was, although I, I'm in Long Beach. <laughs> <laughs> is this Byron Allen? <laughs> was, um, <laughs> um, but I do. I actually do have something to plug. Um, I don't know what episode. Wait, wait, I was setting you up for your earthquake bit. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. You know, I don't know if you heard about the earthquake. Uh, it was a seven, but in the Midwest, it's a ten. <laughs> Wait, is Paul laughing so hard his camera's shaking? <laughs> yeah. No, it's another earthquake. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, do, shit. I do want to promote one thing, Tom. I don't know if you remember what number we're at, but uh, if you just want to check out the latest episode of Stealing God, uh, oh, God. tune in. <laughs> uh, and uh, I prepared a little something. Yeah? Yeah. Do you have a mashup for us? I sure to send do. send this home with? I sure do. You, you guys remember these, right? <laughs> Jim takes two impressions and he jams them together and we have to guess what it is. Oh, shit, he changed his background for it. Uh-oh. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And it's and it's harder than normal mashups because he always, like, doesn't quite remember how what somebody said in a movie or something. Or so the person's like, always, name. Like everything's a Mandela effect for him. Like every single thing is like, that's not the line he said. And that was another army movie. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. I'm ready. Uh, all right. I'm glad you guys are all here. I want to explain what happened. First, I want to set the stage and understand that this part is where I got the idea. So I was in charge and they had two thieves both before me, right? One of them is this Dick Barabbas, right? I may not be even saying his name right, but he is a stone cold thief. Other guy, Jesus. Seems like a cool dude. I say to the crowd, which one of them do you want me to let go? And you'd think, well, they're probably gonna say Jesus. I would think that they're gonna say Jesus. They don't. They say free Barabbas. Mm. Here's my idea. So Barabbas, He's free, right? Well, then Jesus gets free too, and they start solving mysteries. I see it as kind of episodic. We've got Barabbas and Jesus are solving mysteries, right? right. We have guest stars, and um, I think like it can be one of those cool, a little bit, you remember Miami Vice, but like for this generation, for the Netflix generation, it's like this episodic thing where Barabbas and Jesus are doing mysteries and hey you can you can have one of your guys as a guest star if you've got some star you're really promoting you can put him in there um i i you guys hopefully i get a lot of money on the back end but i'm willing to give you guys the back end money i i just want some of the uh advertising and the toys anybody got it is that uh. your Pontius pilot pitch yes <laughs> That's what I thought, and then I went, nah, that's dumb. It's got to be something better than that. <laughs> no, if your thought was, no, that's dumb, that's got to be it. Right. It's, it should also be, yes, that's dumb. 
I, I not it, know that's dumb, but yes, that's dumb. What is this background? Is that the Garden of Gethsemane? No, <laughs> that was for the original matchup I was going to do. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Which I was couldn't figure out how to do, which was waiting for Gail Gadot. <laughs> Gail Gad, what? Gail Gadot. <laughs> waiting for Gail because you know that she played Patrick, Wonder Lady, right? Yeah. Well, you know Patrick Stewart pronounces it Gadot. <laughs> well, she also does he pronounce her first name Gail because it's actually Gal. Yeah. yeah. There's no I. <laughs> Uh, no, no, she is a lady. She's a the girl. prophecy has been fulfilled. All right. So, uh, yeah, and I think this went exactly as we all thought it would. Um, <laughs> I think it, it went off with many hitches. Uh, so uh, I guess we're done then. Uh, so I don't remember how we used to end this, but uh, that's don't. the show. And go fuck yourself, everybody. Yeah, that was it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's all it was.